Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to have another video in the explain series where we are going to discuss the long short term memory cell or LSTM for short. This is a brief introduction of recurrent neural networks for those of you that are not familiar with this type of concept. And I show this because basically long short term memory cells are a derivation of this type of neural network with some improvements on it. And as you can see, recurrent neural networks are a special type of uh, neural nets that work on sequences of vectors. And here on the bottom, we have such a sequence where we have words in a sentence representing by their bendings. And the way the recurrent neural networks work is to take the first embedding here uh, run it through a recurrent neural network cell and produce what's known as a hidden state, which basically is the memory which is transferred from one step to another. And at the next step, we take as input the hidden state. We run it through the recurrent neural cell together with the embedding of the second word and we produce again another hidden state representing all the information in the sequence until this point. And we repeat these steps for all the words in the sequence and I will do it one more time. We take again the hidden state at the second step. We run it through the recurrent neural network cell together with the embedding of the third word and we produce again the final hidden state in this brief uh, sentence. And we can use these hidden states for various tasks in, for instance, in natural language processing, like, I don't know, MTT recognition or document classification and so on. And this is how the internal architecture of the long short term memory cell looks like. And these are the equations that characterize it. It might look pretty overwhelming at first, but trust me, once you get your head around this, they are pretty easy. Basically, what we have inside the LSTM cell are three gates. The forget gate, the input gate, and the output gate. And all these gates control the information flow from one step to the other in our sequence. The first gate in the LSTM cell is the forget gate and what it basically does is to forget an amount of the information that was transmitted from the previous step. In our image it is shown in this part of the cell and this part here with the sigma it's basically this equation here as you can see, we take as input the current embedding and the previous hidden state. We multiply each of those with a weight matrix, which are different for each of the two uh, inputs. And we also add the bias. And very importantly, we multiply this result with a sigmoid function here. And why do that? Because if we multiply these values with a sigmoid function, we get values between 0 and 1. So when we multiply the values uh, provided by the sigmoid function with the previous uh, cell state, in some way, we control how much uh, of that information at each time, at each like uh, index, to transfer it further uh, into the sequence. And this one, this symbol here, for those that don't know, is the element-wise product in a vector. The second gate is the input gate, and this gate controls how much information to add to the cell state at the current step given the previous hidden state and the embedding vector. And this gate is composed of two parts. The first part is here, another sigmoid uh, function type of like neural network. 
And again, it takes uh, as input the uh, current embedding and uh, previous hidden state. It multiplies each of them again with two embedding matrices and adds a bias. And as in the case of the forget gate, we applied the sigmoid function. But uh, this gate is not applied to the self state. It's applied to another hidden representation. A uh, representation that is computed by another small neural network and that is represented in our image by the symbol phi here. And again, it takes as input the current embedding, the previous hidden state, it multiplies them by uh, two weight matrices, each input, and then adds a bias. And here we don't apply the sigmoid function, we apply the tan h function. So this phi here is the tan h. And why you do that is because this uh, a uh, small neural network is not responsible for controlling how much information to transfer, but uh, it is responsible to transform the uh, representation, the combined representation of the current embedding and the previous hidden state into another representation. And what we do with the output of these two small neural networks, YT and GT, is to element wise multiply them here and what basically happens is that in white we have values between 0 and 1 and in the gt we have values between minus 1 and 1 so this operation here basically controls how much of the uh, new representation to put in the uh, current cell state you can see here that we have the plus and also here in the image we have the plus symbol. And finally, we have the output gate which controls how much of the cell state information to transfer to the next step. And this one here has another sigmoid uh, neural network that takes as input again the current embedding and the previous hidden state. Again, it multiplies those values with a weight matrix and adds bias. And to all these results, uh, it applies the sigmoid function. And again, we have the phi symbol here, which is, uh, as in the case of the input gate, uh, the 10H function applied this time not to the input embedding and the previous hidden state, but to the cell state itself. Okay, and what we do with the values of OT and the results of this one here is to again uh, multiply element wise those two vectors. And as in the previous cases, we uh, as a result control how much of the cell state to transfer to the next step. And here we can see the LSTM cell in action, again applied to the same sequence as in the RN case where we have uh, embedding for each of the words in the sequence. So the mechanism basically the same, there is just a little difference. So you take the first embedding, you process it uh, through the long short term memory cell, you produce the cell state and the hidden state you pass them to the next step, you use the embedding of the uh, second step and produce a new cell state and a new hidden state. And again, we can do that for the third step. We transfer the cell state and the hidden state. We use the embedding here. We process both of them and we produce a new cell state and a new hidden state. And again, as in the recurrent neural network case, we can use the hidden states here produced by the long short term memory cells for various NLP tasks, like again, like uh, name entity recognition and so on. We can also use the cell state. Nobody 
can stop us, but uh, I haven't seen them so much in practice as an input uh, to a neural network that stays on the top of the LSDM uh, cells. And why are the long short term memory cells more useful than recurrent neural networks? Is basically because, by the way, they control the flow of information, the vanishing and exploding gradients problem in errands become much more unlikely to happen. And I've made a video on this topic, the link is in the description. And if you want to find out more about recurrent neural networks and the vanishing uh, gradients problem, please make sure to check them out. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and if you did, please leave a like to it and maybe consider subscribing to this channel to see its new content and hopefully see you pretty soon. Bye bye.